Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, a clinical topic, the cortical sensations. The cortical sensations made easy. So today we will talk about the cortical sensations, a very interesting phenomenon, anosognosia. We have the two primary sensory tracts, spinothalamic tract carrying pain and temperature, the posterior column carrying the position joint, vibration sense and touch. These sensations ascend from the sensory receptors and go up to thalamus. So these sensations of posterior column, touch, position, joint, vibration sense and the sensations carried by spinothalamic tract, pain and temperature can be perceived in thalamus, these primary sensations. But what goes from the thalamus to the parietal cortex or the post central gyrus these sensations which are going to be appreciated are known as cortical sensations. These sensations are tactile localization, two-point discrimination, tactile extinction, graphesthesia and paragnosis. So when the primary sensations are intact and then go up to the level of thalamus, what the parietal lobe does is that the parietal lobe receives the primary sensations, correlates, synthesizes, refines these primary sensations and then gives rise to these cortical sensations. So unless these cortical sensations are intact, we cannot test the cortical sensations. Only when the cortical sensations are intact, and the cortical sensations are lost, then only we will say that it is a parietal lobe lesion. But if the primary sensations itself are lost, then we can never say because there are no sensations for it to synthesize and integrate. So primary sensations are intact, but if cortical sensations are lost, then it is a cortical lesion that is the parietal lobe lesion. So the parietal cortex receives correlates, synthesizes and refines these primary sensations of spinothalamic tract that is pain and temperature and touch position joint vibration sense of the posterior column. So as I said the cortical sensations are tactile localization, two-pole discrimination, tactile extinction, graphesthesia and stereoglosis. Tactile localization is that when we test out precise point, the parietal lobe is able to appreciate it, the tactile localization, because it is very much widespread in the, in the sensory homonucleus of the parietal lobe, so there is a point to point representation, so a single point on the opposite side can be appreciated by, by the parietal lobe, so this is tactile localization, precise point. Then comes a very interesting phenomenon, the two point discrimination. So when we put two points on the hand or for that matter any, any particular part of the body and the brain is able to appreciate them as two points and not a single point, then we call that as two point discrimination. So the minimum distance between the points that can be confidently felt and separated is this two point discrimination. So when we put two points and if the brain perceives as if it's a single point, that means the brain is not able to discriminate it as two points. So this two point discrimination is very, very important, especially when it comes to the parietal lobe. As I said, in the parietal lobe, there's a sensory homonucleus. There's a representation of the point to point. Every point of the body is represented in the parietal cortex sensations wise and motor wise. 
but the sensations are according to the quality the fineness for example we use fingers we need it to appreciate any object the face the tongue and the lips so there's more representation of the face face tongue lips and the hands as compared to the thorax and therefore the two point discrimination is felt very minutely that means the person is able to say even a small distance of the two points in the fingertips tongue and the lips and two point discrimination is not at all precise on the back or the trunk because according to the sensory homunculus the representation is not according to the quantity it is according to the quality be it motor homunculus or sensory homunculus the representation of the body is not according to the quantity our thorax is more our legs are more in size but we hardly use them whereas fingers we keep on using manual dexterity that is one point which differentiates us from the animals we keep using face for facial muscles the tongue and the lips for talking lips if the lips get affected orbicularis oris the labial component gets affected if the tongue gets affected lingual component 12th now the lingual component gets affected if the palate gets affected the 10th now the palate component gets affected pataka so all these representations are there in the sensory homunculus according to the quality wise not according to the quantity wise whether it is motor homunculus or sensory homunculus and therefore since the representation is more for the hands and the face the two point discrimination is highly sensitive on the lips and the finger tips and the tongue so that's the significance next i'll talk about a very very interesting and important concept that tactile extinction in fact more than sensory it is a sensory attentional mechanism more than somatosensory mechanism it is a sensory attentional mechanism <clears throat> the right parietal lobe lesions produces a left hemi neglect whereas the left parietal lobe lesion usually does not produce right hemi neglect as i said the tactile extinction more than somatosensory perception it is more of sensory attentional mechanisms why right parietal lobe is more concerned with hemi with the spatial orientation and the attentional mechanisms as compared to the left parietal lobe very interesting and exciting the mechanism is as follows the right parietal lobe controls both the right and the left extra personal space the right parietal lobe controls both the right and the left extra personal space whereas the left controls only the right extra personal space the contralateral extra personal space right controls both the ipsilateral and the contralateral extra personal space whereas the left parietal lobe controls only the right extra personal space and therefore if there is a lesion in the left parietal lobe the right extra personal space is affected but this is compensated by the intact right parietal lobe which controls both the right and the left extra personal space and therefore left parietal lobe does not produce right defective attention or hemi neglect but if right parietal lobe gets affected both the right and the left extra personal space gets affected this right deficit can be compensated by the intact left parietal lobe which directs contralateral attention but there is no compensation on the left extra personal space and therefore right parietal lobe produces left hemi neglect as i said tactile extinction is more of sensory attentional mechanism and therefore when there is a right parietal lobe lesion they selectively do not appreciate sensations on the left side this we can appreciate clinically by touching the two stimulus on two sides of the body simultaneously and when the person is asked to say on which side the person has been touched 
they neglect left side there's no sensory attentional mechanism on the left side they say there's only a touch on the right side so they totally neglect the left side this we call it as tactile extinction so when the two stimulus are placed on the two sides of the body only the right side is appreciated the left side is not appreciated because right parietal lobe has got a deficient or deficit in the left extra pastoral space so very interesting phenomenon if the sensory inattention is so much so that they completely neglect the left side of the body to the extent of saying that the left side of the body does not belong to them complete hemi neglect if you pinch them on the left side they'll say whose hand you're pinching at if you drop their hand it'll just fall dead they'll say oh someone's hand has dropped so they deny the existence of the left side of the body very interesting they deny the presence of the left side of the body so in the right parietal lobe region they deny the existence of the left side of the body they deny any kind of illness on the left side of the body which we call it as anosognosia same thing can happen in the visual cortex on the right side what we call as anton syndrome though they are blind they deny that they are blind similarly in the right parietal lobe though they may have deficit on the left side a sensory deficit they in fact deny the existence of the left side of the body they deny the illness what we call it as anosognosia very interesting mechanism the other important uh, manifestations of the parietal oblution is autotopagnosia the body part as a scheme of the body part <coughs> scheme of the body part is represented in the parietal lobe we know every part where it is i can i can say even with my closed eyes where my right hand is where my left hand is where my legs are placed i know the relationship of one part of the body to the other part but if the parietal lobe lesion is present autotopagnosia that is they cannot know they do not know the relationship of the parts of the body that we call as autotopagnosia a deficit of body scheme in fact they may have it specifically for fingers also what we call as finger agnosia they cannot identify or name the fingers if you put the fingers in a crossed way like this and ask which side the finger is what is the name of the finger they get totally confused if we put it like this and show them and ask them to show where the right ring finger is there or where the left index finger is there they get totally confused in fact is a manifestation of gerstmann syndrome finger agnosia right left disorientation agraphia a calculia if you have all these four components you call that as gerstmann syndrome as i said the the primary sensations go up to the level of the thalamus but the integration analysis of the sensations the refinement of all these sensations is done by the parietal lobe so when there's a parietal lobe lesion it also produces two types of sensory loss one is a one is agraphisthesia second is stereognosis suppose i place a pen even with closed eyes i can feel it and say it is pen but persons with parietal lobe lesion when the primary sensations are intact they can touch the temperature pain sensations are intact but still they cannot say that it is pain by feeling it this is what we call as a stereognosis likewise though the touch the primary sensations are intact if you write numbers or letters on their hands they cannot identify it you call that as a graphisthesia so these are all the cortical sensations tactile localization two point discrimination tactile extinction stereognosis and graphisthesia if in fact the tactile extinction is so severe we call that as anosognosia where they deny the existence of the one side of the body and deny the existence of illness itself so the two important points we need to learn in these cortical sensations are one the primary sensations are carried up to thalamus from thalamus to the parietal cortex what is carried it is known as cortical sensations 
which integrates and synthesizes and refines these sensations. So unless the primary sensations are intact, we cannot test the cortical sensations and then only when the cortical sensations are lost and primary sensations are present, we call that as a cortical sensory loss or parietal occlusion. The second important point is that though there are so many cortical sensations, the most important cortical sensation which can even pick up a subtle sign of a parietal lobation, subtle, it may, it may not be obvious, very small, subtle parietal lobation where there is a subtle sensory loss, what is the most important of all these cortical sensations? The answer is two-point discrimination. Two-point discrimination can pick up even the subtle deficit of a parietal lobe lesion. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my IP page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.